Back to the Office probably has the hardest collection of screens in the game, which makes sense given that it's the final area. The strategy for the first screen is to platform to the tops of the trash cans and then jump over the spiders. You can see me doing that here. The trash cans will shoot at you if you get in front of them. Fire up to take care of the light fixture, then jump over this guy. If you aggro him, he's a pain in the butt. Switch to the fire in the elevator. For the wrench thrower, I do a high boost to dodge the first one. Then once I'm past him, I turn around and shoot the fire backwards to kill the second wrench he'll throw at you. Use the quad for this screen. I take the lower path since there's less enemies to clear out. Make sure you stop firing once you get to this point. There are enemies we don't want to shoot. Jump and aim for this guy's head, then we're going to jump off of it. Do a forward boost over this fish. After landing on the next enemy's head, wait until you bounce up to press jump so you do a forward boost this time under the fish. Using the quad to clear out the next enemies. Keep in mind that these three enemies shoot when you shoot at them. After clearing out these enemies, drop off this platform to avoid the bullets, then boost over the enemy that charges at you. Jump from about this grass patch, then boost onto the trash can's head. Jump and boost over these set of enemies, and use the quad to clear out the tumbleweeds. Jump from about this post and onto the trash can's head. Make sure that you hold down the quad so that you clear out these enemies. Turn around and start firing backwards because we have a bird screen coming up. When you see the caution sign, it's safe to turn around and face forward. The quad will take care of the fish. You can either use the quad or the fire on this screen. I find the quad more efficient. Use your weapon to take out these enemies. What is important is your boost pattern because it's very easy to take a dumb hit. Once you get on this little platform, aim your jumps in between the fireballs. Start shooting against once you get over this water. Once you kill those fish and the guys that charge at you, you're home free. Here comes the plant jump. Fire upwards to kill his projectiles. Jump at about this stoplight post. Once you get over his outstretched leaf, that's when you boost. Just go under this next guy and watch out for the bird. This is where we buy the last heart boost for 60 coins, and as you can see, we still have enough money for the heart jar. I could have bought a fifth heart here, but you'll usually only have that many coins if you farmed up for the heart jar in the first place, which you shouldn't do if you haven't used it yet. Here comes the tower climb. Be prepared to jump and boost at the start of this first screen. Get on top of this box and fire up to kill the light fixture. Do a high boost to skip using the ladder. Boost over to the platform in the water, you should shoot to kill this crab. Boost onto the tiny ledge, hold jump and shoot, then boost once you get just below this overhang. That should keep you out of the aggro range of the fridges. Pick up your extra dapper jacket. Boost while you're entering this next screen, that will give us a good bit of speed when transitioning to the next room. Boost on top of the ice block and then drop off and boost again, holding fire. After killing that snowball, jump and do a rather late boost over that icy section. Do a tiny hop to take care of this icicle, then onto the blower's head and jump over the ice blocks and kill it with the fire. It's not a big deal if you don't make it to the top one as you can squeeze under the middle one after killing the bottom one. Same deal as before, boost while entering the next screen. Boost onto the boxes and just walk forward. Jump right about here and do a high boost. You're supposed to land on this caution sign. Boost forward in between the bomb and the lower mole, kill the one that's up here. Shoot a few times to break apart the big enemy, then boost through him. Wait for the lasers to shoot before finishing the screen. platform up here with forward boosts. It's barely possible to skip the last one. Use the fire to take care of the lights and the pink bat. Just bounce across these guys' head, being careful not to aggro them. With a well-timed boost, you can squeeze between the enemy and the overhang. Killing yourself will refill your health without consuming the heart jar. You can use that if you have enough lives. 
You can get bumped through the stairs if you boost up into them like this. At the beginning of the president fight, clear out the flies and watch out for this first attack. We're going to be using the quad to take down a shield, just be wary that when they drop off they'll charge at you. When her shield is gone, start camping her hitbox. If you get too close, she'll charge in the other direction. Minus 420. More camping the hitbox for phase 2. When she spawns the rectangles and you kill the first one, stand on top of it and then finish the fight like that. You need to walk over the very center of her to activate the cutscene. There's a heart just past the door. You have to jump pretty high over the door because it sucks you in like a magnet if you get near it. There's not much I can say to make Missing No an easy boss, it's really just practice because there's a lot of subtle things that you'll just learn how to react to, like how he throws his error messages or how to use the platforms. Obviously being able to mash fast is a good thing. A 5 cycle on this boss is normal, meaning that he jumps up and down like this 5 times. You can 4 cycle him, but you need to do a lot of damage to him on the first round. The health that triggers his enrage is about half, which is like 600. If you pay attention, you can see that I squeeze an extra damage as he puts up his shield because he leaves part of him vulnerable while he swipes the shield upward. Time. The first frame where his eyes are closed means that he's dead. Now we have the credits. So as of this recording, my personal best as well as the world record is 2841. It's not unbeatable, but it's pretty good, I think. It's possible just to not get the fourth health upgrade altogether, and obviously play a little bit better. So here's how to check your in-game time. Just answer no to this prompt and he'll send you into New Game Plus, then you immediately quit out. Your time is on your file, but in-game time is super inaccurate because it counts the final cutscene and it's based on the game's frame rate, which also makes the game run faster or slower, so if it's running at higher than 60fps the game will run faster than it should, and inversely if it's running slower than 60fps the game will be slower. But that just about wraps up Carol Blaster, have fun in your speed gaming.